you have questions, Ryan Day has answers. And he answers some of our questions at Big Ten. You have questions, Ryan Day has answers. And he answered some of our questions at Big Ten Media Days. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeyes fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes. For the Locked On Podcast Network, I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, July 27th in the year 2023, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listener, first watch of every single day. During today's episode, we will discuss news and things that we learned about the Ohio State Buckeyes at Big Ten Media Days. And is there a change coming to the game against Michigan? But first, we all knew at some point there was going to be a question or a conversation that Ryan Day would have to be in the middle of in regards to Ohio State's quarterback battle at Big Ten Media Days. Would it come during Ryan Day's open uh, press conference at Big Ten Media Days that was live on the Big Ten Network? Or would it come to his podium session that was a few hours after that? Would it come in one of the one-on-one conversations that Ryan Day had with numerous media members that attended the event? When would it come? We did not know, but we all realized at some point Ryan Day would have to discuss the quarterback battle at Ohio State. And the question came early on in the day. Tim May, a longtime reporter, for Ohio State football, currently with Letterman Row on the ON3 network. Tim May first asked Ryan Day who the backup quarterback would be, and then they both laughed about it, realized there was a joke behind it because that wasn't really the real question. And then Tim May asked another question that got Ryan Day to kind of open up about Kyle McCourt, Devin Brown, Tristan Jebbia, and Lincoln Kean Holds. Ryan Day went back to forward from youngest to guy who's probably going to be in third string to the two guys are battling to be starting quarterbacks at Ohio State. Before we get to Brian Day's response, I like how he answered this question. He said, I know the top two guys that are here. How about I go ahead and reverse this order, go the newcomer, a guy who came shortly before him, and then the two guys that are battling to be QB1 at Ohio State. I like the play on the mind that he had here. Ryan Day went on to discuss Lincoln. Kean Holds said he is surprised with his approach. Remember now, Lincoln Kean Holds, incoming freshman, a summer enrollee, stayed in high school, finished up playing basketball there in high school, then also played baseball. He's a three sport athlete. I think he's all state in at least one sport. I think at least two sports could be three. He's just an all around athlete. Lincoln Kean Holds came in and said, Hey, man, I'm here to be a Buckeye quarterback. What do I got to do? Oh, he's surprised with the approach. I like that. Tristan Jebbia said he's done a good job being a coach, and he has a good grasp of the playbook right now. Also, a guy who's come in in Jebbia, played a lot of football, coming into Ohio State, found a role for him, and he's being attentive and taking full advantage of the role that's in front of him. And they would have to the top two guys, those that are battling to be QB1 for Ohio State. He said Devin Brown first and Kyle McCord second. I'll say that first. Some of y'all might be like, oh, that's starter. Or, oh, he said Devin first because he's not the starter, but he wants you to think that he is a starter because his name came out first. Talk really fast. Didn't know it was going to come out that quickly or that smooth. I'm, hey, <laughs> good job. But also at the same time, he did make these comments about these two quarterbacks. They've had good summers. They've shown leadership, but left us with this quote at the end of his answer to Tim May's question. Quote, would like for someone to emerge here quickly, end quote. I'm with him. I would love for somebody to emerge here quickly, Ryan Day. I, I, I'm here with you. I, I would I would love for someone to emerge knowing that fall camp is starting really, really soon. I would love for someone to emerge and say, oh, first scrimmage, bam, we got our guy. Let's ride with him. I would love for it to happen. I would have loved for somebody to emerge prior to the start of spring ball, say, that's our guy. He's QB1. Let's go forward with it. Would love it. Also, there's a reality that that might not happen. That what Ryan Day wants and what I want, what you want, what we all want is for someone to emerge for the guys on offense, no matter if it's Trevian Henderson, Mayan Williams, Kate Stover, uh, Donovan Jackson, Matthew Jones, Joshua Fryer, 
Harrison Jr., Abuka, Fleming, whoever it is, we would all love for someone to emerge as a starting quarterback here quickly. But if it does not happen, be prepared. I am preparing myself, and I hope you are as well, preparing ourselves to go through a fall camp where maybe a starting quarterback does not emerge. Maybe they're so close neck and neck that it's very, very hard to make a decision. My thought is if it goes into that way, into that realm, and we're seeing ourselves look and see, oh, well, that guy has not emerged, Devin Brown or Kyle McCord. Neither one has emerged as a starting quarterback. How about we take this thing into the regular season? Here's where things get a little bit tricky. Many of you have looked at the schedule and you have easily seen that Ohio State's schedule opens up with the Indiana Hoosiers. Should be a cakewalk. Should be an easy walk in the park. The Hoosiers are trash. Yes, they have a a transfer quarterback in Taven Jackson. Doesn't mean anything. Dual threat guy. It does not matter. I saw the kid play in high school. Did not see a power five quarterback even at the Indiana level, when I saw him play in high school. So I'm I'm not really too worried about that. However, you're going up against a Big Ten opponent on the road. Even though it's a lesser opponent, those Big Ten games are slightly weighted. So after that game, you have Youngstown State and you have Western Kentucky before Notre Dame. Do you start? Do you go into the game saying you're going to alternate series? McCord start, your older, no matter what. McCord just started the game. And then Devin Brown go back and forth and back and forth. And then do you go into the Youngstown State game on September 9th and then the Western Kentucky game on September 16th and say, well, here we go again. McCord, you start. Brown, you start. The winner between now the, between those three games, we final, finalize our evaluations and somebody is starting against Notre Dame. Is that the way you should go about handling this situation? That's a very tricky way to do it, and I would not recommend it. Um, however, that might be what Ryan Day needs to do. I don't know, man. I don't have all the answers, and I would never tell you that I have all the answers. The only thing I can say is, day is statement. We we would like for someone to emerge here quickly. I'm with them. In a great, perfect world, we're not in July at Big Kid Media Days and not having somebody emerge, even if that person has not been announced just yet. In a perfect world, we already know who QB1 is. In a perfect world, we already know who is going to be throwing the ball to Harrison Jr. and Fleming and Abuka and Xavier Johnson. Let's not forget Xavier Johnson might be coming up in a segment next week about how he is kind of the perfect weapon for Ryan Day's offense and also for Brian Hartline, depending on who is going to call plays for the Buckeyes in the fall. We do realize The Buckeyes have a lot of talent in the quarterback room, and Ryan Day made this statement in regards to the quarterback room. It might be the most depth that the team has had in quite a long time. You have a leader, longtime college football player in Tristan Jebbia, who is probably your third-string guy. You have a guy, an incoming freshman in Lincoln Kienholz, who adds a wrinkle and adds some things that I don't believe any of the other three quarterbacks can provide as quarterback at Ohio State. And then what else do you have? You get a two-headed monster. Two guys that could start at Ohio State this year and two guys, if they were elsewhere, they would probably be in the running to start or would start at almost any other college football program in the country. Now, granted, I know North Carolina has a good quarterback and Notre Dame is a good quarterback. And what else you got? You got USC with a good quarterback. I get it. There are a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Cal McCord, Devin Brown, they're talented, man. And they're both going to be fighting, scratching, and clawing to win the QB battle at Ohio State. Ryan Day says he hopes a quarterback would emerge here quickly. All I got to say about that, I'll say it one more time. I hope one does too. We just went through some news that we learned from Ryan Day at Big Ten Media Days. There's a lot more stuff in my notebook that we got from Day's appearance at the annual event. What will we go through next? What else did we learn? I'll tell you next on Lockdown Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's so easy and it's free to to create a job post on LinkedIn Jobs. 
once you create your job post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for being locked on Buckeyes, your first listen every single day. Now is the perfect time to subscribe to Locked on Buckeyes so you don't miss a beat. No matter if you're catching us on Apple or Spotify or the Odyssey app, even YouTube, subscribe to Locked on Buckeyes. If you're an Apple or Spotify listener, leave a five-star review and a rating. It's a great free way to help more people come across the Locked on Buckeyes podcast. Also, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Smash the like button here on this video and also hit that bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live. Locked on Buckeyes is a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. Big Ten Media Days is one of those events that you may like it, you may dislike it. You may be somebody that says, oh, well, I don't want to be here for the. I don't really care for a lot of things going on at the event, but when the Ohio State Buckeyes are talking or if they're if they're on a camera, you want to check out what is going on with them. That's kind of how it is with this with this time time of year. The unofficial kickoff to the season also allows us to get time with Ryan Day, Marvin Harrison Jr., Cade Stover, and JT Tuomaloa and others to learn about them and. Get some insights into what makes them the person that they are. But Ryan Day is also somebody that we can always learn a lot from. He may do the coaching tap dancing, verbal tap dancing when things are being asked to him. Or other times there are going to be things that he you can learn from him directly in regards to players' health in regards to who might emerge as an incoming freshman. But all things aside, we got I I was I was on the Twitter. I actually got a DM from a listener. Shout out to the listener who sent this uh, tweet my way from Brett McMurphy in regards to the NBC's Big Ten schedule. And lo and behold, we all know that the schedule has Ohio State, Michigan State as a night game on NBC, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff. That will be in the shoe. We also have another game on the NBC. That is on October 28th. The Saturday before Halloween might be a spooky trip to Camp Randall Stadium as the Buckeyes will be taking a trip to Madison, Wisconsin to face the Wisconsin Badgers in prime time. NBC, great. Also, side note, these games, this is tentative. This schedule is tentative because games could be flexed to different networks, which would alter what game is on the NBC during that week. Buddy, I got other stuff to talk about to, to discuss with Ryan Day. But Ohio State, Wisconsin, Camp Randall, jump around. I love college football traditions. Jump around in Camp Randall is one that I don't really jump or move around like that. But, buddy, I would get a part of I would get involved with that one and have a little bit of fun. But also, Luke Fickle, former Ohio State football player, former Ohio State coach, is now the coach at Wisconsin. You say the first time Luke Fickle coaches against his former team is under the lights in Camp Randall? Hey, these are storylines that I'm here for, that we're going to be discussing here on the show. I, I love it. You also got some other news from the day and Big Ten Media Days, but I wanted to highlight that quickly because that was constant games. Tricky, buddy. Ohio State does not come ready to play. Woo! Cam Brando might be rocking and rocking because the Badgers just rocked the Buckeyes. I don't think it's going to happen. However, it is possible. Other things we learned from Big Ten Media Days, Ryan Day said a couple freshmen that have emerged and kind of impressed him of late. One of them we he already we already talked about is Lincoln Kinholds. Another one is an in-state product from I do believe. Oh, the school escapes my mind. Oh my goodness, Ohio State fans will get on me. Why is it escaping my memory? It's Arvell Reese, a linebacker. Now we got that much right. I still forget the school 
that the young man went to. However, we love hearing about incoming freshmen that might emerge. And also, Sonny Styles is not an incoming freshman, but someone who might emerge is someone that came out of Cade Stover's mouth as someone that might surprise and wow people this year. He's a freak of nature. I remember seeing him play basketball in high school. And I said, ain't no way that kid's still a junior in high school. Ain't no way that youngster is someone that is built. High school cats aren't built like Sonny Styles was when he was in high school. Six foot four, 220 pounds. I bet you when he leaves, he's probably up to 225 to 228 in, so, in not solid muscle, but getting some of that baby fat off of him, putting on some of his grown man strength. I am here for some of the young guys we get to learn about. Ryan Day also discussed how to tailor a defense. And this was one that was key because there's a lot of questions about the Buckeyes defense and going into year two under Jim Knowles. What are things you should expect? And Ryan Day made this statement. When it comes to tailoring a defense, you must tailor the, de the defense to what your, what your guys can do, but also you must put your players in the, in the right spot. And as I make the statement that you must put your players in the right spot, some of you are thinking about Jack Sawyer, as you should. I don't know if the Jack position was ideal for his skill set or for him to be successful on the field, which is why when it comes to figuring out and being able to put your guys in the right spot, it's key. Buddy, it's pivotal. Buddy, it's something that must be done correctly. Because as we all want the Rushman package, what if you have a defensive end who cannot play inside a DN but needs to play outside? And your starting DN can't go inside. But you bring the backup in in the inside inside D tackle spot where that's not where he's best suited or where he can be good at all. And all of a sudden you're wondering, why can't these two talented guys make it work on obvious passing, passing downs? Maybe it's because you're putting your guys in the wrong spots and they're not being in spots for them to be successful. Ryan Day also discussed and, and touched into the um, offensive line and uh, what maybe the biggest concern is for him going into the season. Um, biggest concern is guys who haven't played. Realistically, outside of Donovan Jackson and Matthew Jones, your left and right guard respectively, you don't have guys that have played. Yes, Joshua Simmons played at San Diego State, also wants to be known as Jimmy, called by Jimmy, so by calling him Jimmy Simmons here on the show, but he hasn't played power five football. Also, you have Josh Fryer really hasn't consistently played football. Maybe in a backup role, had a start or two under his belt, but he has not played consistent football, starting football at Ohio state. Ryan day also touched on Josh Fryer cut weight, which is a good thing for him. Uh, Luke Montgomery, Josh Simmons, and Tego Tishabola are guys that have been playing really, really good ball that are tackles. Didn't touch on the guards and, I didn't hear, at least in the opening presser, um, didn't hear stuff or much about him in regards to the center position at this point in time during this particular question. However, Ryan is concerned about the O-line, this guys who haven't played. Newsflash. Let me, let's, tap it, let's tap it to my brain really quickly. That's also a concern of mine as well. I'm telling that Ohio State, it's a luxury. The Buckeyes have Indiana, Youngstown State, Western Kentucky games under the belt before playing Notre Dame. Because for those guys who have not played, if that Notre Dame game was week one, oh boy, we're discussing and going to open up a whole new can of worms because of how tricky that matchup would be for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Those are the things we learned from Ryan Day at Big Ten Media Days. Later, we will discuss things we learned and heard from Kate Stover, Tui Maloa, and Harrison Jr. at Big Ten Media Days. It's coming up later on the Locked on Buckeyes podcast. But coming up next, is there a change coming to the Michigan game at the end of the regular season? Every single year, Ryan Day discussed, why well, he'd be open to discussing a possible change to this game. Why? Was this on his mind? We'll discuss it next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also can set you up with a brand new top of the line grill that will last for generations. We all know how hard it is with these supply chain issues this year and getting certain things shipped on time. 
So when it comes to ordering that one big gift for someone you love, check out the Billiards Plus. They have exactly what you have been looking for. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, all hosted, Canada, Billiards and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and La Griddle. That will be the last grill you own. Seriously, these grills stay in the test of time. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Check them out at Billiards-Plus.com. Billiards Plus, family owned and operated for generations. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every single day. Ryan Day is a coach that when he speaks, especially at these events, all eyeballs are fixated on him and all ears are tuned into what Ryan Day is saying. I've been at the Big Ten Media Days over the past couple years, was not able to make it this year. And there's always, I see people walking around all over the place. If Just any coach. If Pat Fitzgerald was still here, no, he's not. Northwestern, okay, people walking around taking pictures. Um, Greg Shiano, Rutgers, people walking around taking pictures. Mel Tucker, Michigan State, people walking around taking pictures. Things are a whole lot different when the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes is at the podium. And when he speaks about the Michigan game, either about what happened a year ago or what might happen this year on November 25th, or about the future of the game, even my ears are more in tune to what he might say. And Ryan Day said he thinks there should be a conversation about whether Ohio State and Michigan should still be played in the final week of the regular season, given the possibility that the Buckeyes and Wolverines could now play in back-to-back weeks with the Big Ten championship game being the following week after the two teams would play for football. My first thought, and this initial thought, I even shared this with my wife before the show, a lot of people that have been Buckeye fans for decades, I'm not saying people like me that are in their mid-30s. I mean, the old heads, 60, 70, 75 years old, 80 years old, they might say, whoa, 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 you don't change our game. You don't mess with our game. You don't, no, 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 Ryan, no, 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 you don't come in here and try to change things up. No, 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 no. You don't come in here and try to... I understand it. But also someone like myself, where my initial thought, I love tradition in in this sport, and I I love um, the tradition of a lot of teams in the Big Ten. I love the tradition of the SEC. I love tradition in college football as a whole. It's a big reason why I'm a fan of the sport. One thing I would say about the possibility of changing the day of the game Still keep it in November. I, I would not go October. And I don't, okay, here's what you here's what you run into. Do you want to do a back-to-back weeks, Penn State, Michigan? No. Okay, Penn State, do you want it middle of October, end of October? I, I think it's better end of October near, near Halloween. But what are you going to do then? You're probably going to have a schedule where it's going to be Penn State, let's just say it's ho- October 28th. And then the next thing you know, you're going two weeks later, a week off, the next two weeks later, you're going to be playing Michigan. I think it's going to be very, very tricky. Not I want to say tricky. Interesting to see if this is something that is going to be discussed. Now, I understand, and I think if not last year, the year before, Clemson and Georgia renewed their rivalry, and that game was played week one of the regular season. Now, that is not a conference game. That is still a rivalry. However, I don't want to play Michigan week one. Maybe you want to play the Wolverines week one. I don't want to play them week one. There's too many things that you want to learn about your team to say, oh, our biggest game of the year is going to be week one. No, I no, 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 no. Also, the final week of the regular season is commonly known and easily known as rivalry week. So you're going to get a lot of pushback with maybe networks saying, we're trying to emphasize this game. Why in the world would you change the date when it's going to help us make more money, which helps you make more money? I'm cool with changing the date of the game. I'm not sold on a day. I, I definitely not sold on a time. I don't want the game to be played at 12 noon. I wish it was played in prime time every week, every year. I don't care if it's if if one team has uh, five wins and the other team is undefeated at that time. Your boy don't care. I want the game in prime time. It's the best rivalry in the sport. I believe the game deserves to be played in prime time. NBC, CBS, Fox. I don't care. Put it in prime time. It's it just makes too much sense. 
But for Ryan Day to make this statement, he knows the power he has with his words. He understands that Gene Smith is very, very powerful, not just to the Big Ten, but also the way the schedules are made and also with the TV networks and those contracts and also in the sports. So this thing could happen. Would you be okay with the game against Michigan being played outside of the final week week in the regular season? And I, I, a lot of you may say no. A lot of you may say yes. Go ahead and hop in the YouTube comment section and let me know. Because if I am Ohio State and Ryan Day, I kind of think I understand where he's coming from. That game is easily the most physical game the Buckeyes play every single year. It's easily the most intense game the Buckeyes play every single – well, regular season. I think the game against Georgia may – there are going to be a, hand, a handful of playoff games that are as physical as the game against Michigan. Not mentally physical, not mentally intense, but as physical as a game against Michigan. I understand it. Ryan Day wants maybe some time in between the Michigan game and the Big Ten Championship. And to have those team, two teams play potentially play the week after the Big Ten Championship game under the way the new, the new schedule is going to go, I get it. I understand it. Now, Texas, Oklahoma always play on a neutral field during the Texas State Fair in Dallas, Texas at the Cotton Bowl. I love that. It's split down in the middle. Yeah, one side Texas fans, the other side uh, t- uh, Oklahoma fans, and they split right down the middle at the 50-yard line. I'm cool with it. I-, I understand it. I like it. I understand it. Also, I don't want this game to, to go to the, um, the 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 world of playing on a neutral site. I don't think you want to play it on a neutral site in, in Michigan, Ford Field. No. Uh, I don't think you want to play it on a neutral site in Ohio, in Cleveland. No, don't think so at all. However, if you want to move that game to October and say, let's say that Texas, Oklahoma was the second Saturday in October, and you want to put Ohio State, Michigan on the following Saturday in October, I'm cool with that. My only thought is, move that Penn State game. Oh, wait. <laughs> the conference didn't do us a favor and do the do themselves a favor and keep Ohio State, Michigan, as, as excuse me, Ohio State, Penn State, as a protected rivalry. So. Honestly, with the way the new schedule with the way the new schedule is going to go and not having divisions, it's more possible than you think that Ohio State and Michigan could not play the final weekend of the regular season and the game could be played in October, maybe the first weekend in November to give the team both teams a few a few weeks prior to potentially playing again in the Big Ten championship game out of here on a Thursday. This is the final week of only having Four shows in a week. To next week, we go back to our regular schedule of five days a week. There will be occasional live shows that I will be um, discussing here on the show. Um, probably going to try and do some during the season, definitely. But I can't say yes or no just yet. Just keep your eyes tuned in to Locked on Buckeyes. Whenever there is a new video or podcast on the app that you choose, click it. There's going to be good news. It's going to be something you you can learn about your Ohio State Buckeyes. As always, you can follow me on Twitter or the threads or the Instagram at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. It provides you with everything you need to know in and around the world of sports in 20 minutes every day single day locked on Buckeyes and locked on sports today they are both a part of the locked on podcast network your team every day this is Jay Stevens here on a Thursday of locked on Buckeyes I'll see you next time